Good morning, South Bay Bible Church. Thank you for joining on the Sunday morning. It's so good to just be able to worship together. Um, yeah, can we go to the scripture reading for today? So I chose, well, this passage is commonly known as the Great Commission, and it's basically the last you know, few verses of, of, Math, of the book of Matthew, um, the, the first of the, the gospel, or one of the gospel or gospels. And so, yeah, I'll just read it for us and then talk a little bit about it. <clears throat> um, but actually a little bit of context is that, you know, this is at the end of the book, right? And so all the things that we commonly know or that we hear about, about Jesus's life and his ministry have already happened, right? He's already, <clears throat> you know, done the Sermon on the Mount and gone through all the different villages, preaching and teaching and doing miracles. Um, and then he's already gone to Jerusalem and was crucified and has resurrected and has now appeared to his disciples again. And so um, let me start from verse 16. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. <clears throat> and so, yeah, like, you know, later today, Uncle Gene will be preaching um, and sharing with us about faith, right? And so as I was kind of meditating on that, um, and reading over this passage, it was kind of interesting because um, you have these disciples, right? And they're following Jesus uh, to the mountain and they worshiped him, but not everybody, um, not everybody was like totally convinced, right? Like there are some who doubted and, you know, it's in this place still that Jesus comes and says to them the great commission, right? All the people who are there, those who are worshiping and those who are doubting. And I think that's just such a kind of a crazy thing to, to think about. Um, but I think it's something that speaks to speaks to me and speaks to us a lot, right? Like, you know, we're often in that place where we're not sure, where we have these doubts, right? Um, and in the midst of that, and God doesn't push us away. God doesn't say like, you know, come back to me when you understand or when you get it, when you, you know, believe again. Um, it's actually in this place that, you know, God will often um, come beside us so that, you know, in our wondering, in our questioning, we find him. In our seeking, we find him. Um, and I think the, you know, the Great Commission, the, the words that Jesus says is so, so powerful, especially at the very end, right? Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Um, and it's a stunning, stunning promise for us, right? Um, especially for those of us who are doubting, for those of us who aren't sure um, what God's plan is or his goodness, right? And Jesus says, no, like he will be with us to the ends of the age. Um, and that is something to take heart in. That's something to really like dig deep in um, this intimacy that, that Jesus promises us that we have <clears throat> with him and with God. Um, so let me pray for us um, just to begin this worship. <laughs> Father God, um, Abba, Father, you are so good to us. And you have called <clears throat> us from many different walks of life, from many different situations, Lord, from many different backgrounds, to be part of your family. And this is not just an invitation um, given out to a select few, but you desire all to come and to join you in your family. And so I just want to lift up a prayer for, for those of us who are uncertain today, who are unsure, or who in the midst of this pandemic um, have just been shaken um, and what they believe in. And especially if 
Yeah, they just don't know if you're good right now, Lord. Um, I pray, Lord God, that you would encounter them. You encounter them in this service, Lord God, that you'd speak to them and that they would know that you are God. You are good and you are their heavenly father, Lord. And I pray for all of us, Lord God, that um, we'd be a, a people um, who more than anything else desire you, <laughs> that the promise that you will be with us to the ends of the age, um, that that would be something that we take heart in and that we not only know, but invest our lives in, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that that you would walk with us, Lord, um, when we're doubting and when we're faithful, Lord, um, when we are full of joy and when we're lamenting, Lord, that in all circumstances and all seasons, Lord, um, that you would walk with us and that we would know that you're our Heavenly Father and that you can be trusted and um, yeah, that you can be trusted with our whole lives, Lord. And so, Father, um, yeah, would you just receive our worship this morning? Um, and we open our hearts, Lord, to, to also receive from you, to receive a word, to receive life from you, Lord. Um, yeah, thank you, Father. And would you be with us in the service? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, South Bay Bible Church. Uh, glad to see everyone joining us here today on this Sunday to worship. Um, yeah, to kind of start off with today, um, I kind of want to introduce us to this new song. It's called Covenant. And the story of how we actually got, ended up on this song is a bit funny. Um, I think Kevin and I were having a trouble this week just praying and trying to figure out what song to do, and we just constantly hit it a blank, right? So I think we were talking about how, how do we see God moving, or how do we feel about God right now, right? And then the word Kevin had was confident. Right. And I think for me, that was a really challenging word, right? Especially this week. Um, COVID, I think, you know, the cases look like they keep still getting worse, right? And I think even this week, hearing just a lot more death than usual has been really hard, right? But, you know, just talking it over with Kevin and kind of just thinking about it more and more, right? Like, God has been moving. God has been moving a lot, right? I think, you know... He's been shaping, he's been molding each and every one of us here, right? Um, even corporately, right? I know right now our life group, uh, just a lot of crazy things are going on right now, right? It's been really cool to see God working there, right? Talking to friends, talking to other Christians I know, just being reminded that, yeah, like, he's still speaking, he's still moving, he's still going, right? Yeah, and so I think given all that, right, this morning I kind of want us to invite us into this time of worship, right, where... To kind of reflect that, yeah, like how has God been moving for you recently, right? And maybe um, it's really easy for you to see right now. Maybe you're in the season where like you feel like, yeah, I can totally see how God is moving, right? And so with that, I want to invite you to sing this song as Thanksgiving, right? Praising Him for the way He's moving, right? I think for many of us, though, it's hard to see God moving right now, right? And so kind of two things with that. I think first of all, like just take this time to in this time of worship, to take the time to ask him, right, and to reflect on how you think he's been moving, right? And if you don't feel at all, right, I invite you to just declare it in faith now, right? I think the phrase is sing the song even louder, <laughs> right? Because, yeah, when the end comes, right, there are things that we are going to be confident in, right? His victory is assured. His love for us is assured. Right? So with that, I invite you all to just join us in worship.
Good morning, Salt Bay Bible Church. I want to, before I start, let me make sure that uh, we don't have any technical issue. I just want to make sure that you are able to hear me uh, clearly and you can also see what I'm sharing on the screen. Please let me know, right? If, uh, all right, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thumb up. All right. Um, so again, I, I feel I'm privileged uh, and honored to be able to uh, be invited by Pastor Sebastian to uh, share this uh, passage with you today. And the title is The Space of Faith, or more precisely, I should say, is Space of Christian Faith, or our faith. And, and I, I don't know if this is really uh, uh, fully described uh, uh, what I mean to say, uh, but I, I have done the best I can uh, with my limited uh, English vocabulary, right? So, so, so the, the concept of space, right? You know, uh, in a sense, I think it's it's common to everyone. Uh, so that means, you know, the we we say that this is space I have, I live, I walk. So we are living in a three-dimensional space, right? So we 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 are aware of uh, the length, the width, and the height. Okay, and of course we we also walk in this uh, journey, right? And you're know, going through this time dimension. So what what I mean by space of faith is that when faith is added to this, and that creates a new space for us, and as Christians, we are living in such a space, right? That's really what I mean. And I will elaborate a little bit more uh, as time goes by. All right, hopefully that will become more clear to you. And the passage is found in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse one to seven. Uh, without any hesitation, let me just uh, quickly take you into this passage, right? Uh, and, um, and, and since, you know, we are now worshiping in Zoom, right? So I, uh, you won't be able to, we won't be able to see each other. So I want to just uh, uh, read it for you, all right? Um, and uh, as I read through it, please join your heart with me, all right? Hebrews chapter 11, verse one to verse seven, and this is from the New Living Translation version. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought to brought a more acceptable offering to God than King did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man. And God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed, he obeyed God, who warned, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Uh, would you please join your heart with me in a word of prayer together to tune our heart for today's message? Let's pray. Dear Lord, I commit this time uh, to your hand. Thank you for giving us this living word that we can uh, we can read, we can rely on, uh, we can uh, trust. Um, and so I just commit this uh, time in your hand, Lord. Uh, although. I'm your instrument speaking to your people, but Lord, indeed, I just pray that uh, the Holy Spirit will just work uh, 
and you speak uh, uh, to your own people uh, with encouragement, uh, with the wisdom, uh, uh, with uh, conviction. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the book of Hebrews, um, just a little bit background, right? Uh, so it was probably written uh, in uh, probably between 60 AD and 70 AD. Um, uh, and, and it is a book that uh, uh, reference more uh, Old Testament scriptures than any other book in the New Testament. Almost every chapter, right? It refers to uh, the passages in the Old Testament. And, and so because of that, it's clearly that it was written at that time to uh, those Christians who have actually uh, 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 Jewish background. Did they know Old Testament pretty well, right? Uh, and it also was written uh, as an encouragement and also as a reminder or warning, right? Because those Christians in those days were going through, were about to go through, right? Or already going through persecution. And so walking in the Christian path, uh, facing, encountering this kind of uh, hardship in their life, this author wrote this book as an encouragement to, to tell them what kind of promise they have from God and ask them to, to hold on to it with faith. So the first 10 chapters, the author has, you know, do everything he could, right, to actually uh, <clears throat> um, convince them God has a better plan, has a better uh, promise comparing to the Old Testament, right, the Old Covenant. And, and through this better uh, or more superior covenant and promise, uh, it, it was made possible because he sent his only son, right, to become a better or more superior mediator and better or more superior uh, uh, sacrifice and to bring in uh, this new and better homeland for his own people. And he, he goes through the Old Testament to, to talk about his plan is a new. God has been faithful. He has been consistent doing this. And now it's already fulfilled, right? So starting in chapter 11, um, now all of a sudden, it's like a, the show, right? Uh, turns to, to us, to people, to Christians, right? Who are the beneficiary of, of what the Jesus Christ has done on the cross. And that's called faith, all right? So the, the entire chapter, as you know, right? This is a very uh, uh, famous chapter. It's a chapter of faith, right? Um, you know, talk about the faith how we can turn this uh, kind of objective uh, benefit into our subjective experience, right? And that's faith. And that's why also I call this the faith of Christian faith, right? And, and of course, you know, the author finished this book with uh, chapter 12 and 13 to talk about our daily life. With that faith, how do we walk? All right, so today, uh, quite honestly, I, I was thinking about the uh, very beginning, right, to uh, use this entire chapter. As I prepared through that, I just realized that, you know, I'm not a good speaker in English. I really have no faith that I, I can uh, talk about this in 30 minutes, right, you know, uh, all the 40 uh, verses. So I re reduce it to the first seven all right, verses. But God's word is so powerful. I hope and I trust, even though I reduce it to only seven verses, it will still be um, uh, found useful and encouraging to you. So let me start with this uh, uh, kind of big picture, right? Um, um, you know, so in this picture, right, I just want, I mean to say that this is actually how we, uh, with that awareness in our mind, right, we, we, it helped us to understand the, you know, the passage, all right? So, we have God in Trinity, right? You know, at the top. And he lives from everlasting to everlasting. And he had a plan. He created this universe. 
in his, and he created man, human, right, human beings, in his image and likeness. And he, he did this because of love. And he praised people who like, you know, look like him and, 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 and behave like him, right, in, 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 in the Garden of Eden. We know the story. And he wants to make this an immortal, right? He basically created his kingdom on earth to share his glory, to glorify him. And through this glorification, men are able to enjoy with him, right? The abundance, the peace, the harmony, everything he possessed. Unfortunately, as Romans chapter five, verse 12 said, right? The Adam sin. And so sin entered the world and affect everyone eventually, including all of us. And the consequence of that is death. So death becomes uh, something that we all are facing today. So in, in, the, in the middle of this page, right, there's, a, uh, there's a double circle, right? It represents our human life, right? So we got the inner being, we got our outer body, that's the form, how God creates us. And, and our, our body eventually will vanish, right? We'll, we'll die. And, and without the further intervening from God, we were supposed to, uh, we're predestined, we were supposed to, after death, right? Uh, we were resting in Hades, which is not, you know, a place that we like to go, right? And, and in the final judgment, uh, when the final judgment came, uh, and, and Hades will, uh, we will be placed in hell. And that's, and, and that's really something that God doesn't want to see. So he sent, he's faithful, although men fail, but he doesn't. So he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us, to perform this regeneration, resurrection, in another creation, a new creation. In this new creation, he died first, and then he resurrected. So he actually take our sin away and then he give us the power of resurrection to be able to overcome the sin as long as we submit to the Holy Spirit. And so eventually when he comes uh, the second time, just like the, the book of Philippians says, right? At that time, our body will be resurrected, will be transformed into the same body that he possessed after his resurrection. We will no longer have weakness. We, we won't get sick, right? So that time the salvation become uh, completely fulfilled. And now we are, we will be with God forever, right? Basically to go back to the original plan. And now we are living in this world, our body still mortal, right? still weak, still got this uh, um, uh, temptation, right? Desire that the Holy Spirit dwell in us. As long as we, we live by faith, then we submit to this, the work of Holy Spirit. And we're able to walk in this journey in this new space. In this new space that we're able to see through the entire time dimension from the past to the future, even though we don't see. And we're able to connect with God, extending our horizon right, to live a more abundant life. So this is the kind of big picture and the, the author of the book of Hebrews was using when he wrote this book. And so now with that understanding, let's go get into the, uh, the scripture. So let me start with this, right? So we, we obviously we all know we enter this space, the space of God through faith. Because it clearly say here it, in, verse, in verse six, right? It is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So we enter the space of God through faith, right? So the first verse tells us 
what is faith? What is faith? Right. So this is kind of more kind of subjective. Objective definition is subjective, right? Objectively, uh, it means that a faith, faith, you know, shows us the reality of this, you know, wonderful promise uh, which has not come yet. But it, it let us see it. Because we see it, although it hasn't come, but we still, we can still benefit from it, even starting now. So that's kind of objective uh, uh, meaning, right? Um, in contrast, uh, faith, when we say that we live by faith, what does that mean? That means you know, we can also exercise that promise that we haven't seen at, this, at the present time with the awareness, with that faith. Because the second verse said that through their faith, through their whose faith, a lot of people, who live in the history, right? Just like us. Through their faith, those people, right, have earned a good reputation. A good reputation from whom? Not from men, right, but also from God. God sees them as faithful. And God can approve them. Yeah, this is the kind of life I want you to live. And this is the best possible way you can ever live your life. So it, it, it is also a, could be an experience, right? Um, so that's the substance of faith. And faith also has, is an enabler. Because faith, with faith, right? It, it, it enables us to be able to see through this time dimension. So, so it, we, we believe, all right, this God has created the entire universe, including us. And we believe that God has prepared us a better homeland. And we believe that God is working, right, through Holy Spirit today in our life. And so it's an enabler, right? So, 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 so an analogy could be that, you know, I think this is, should not be uh, new to us, right? I still remember when I was a kid, you know, I think I was a second grader at that time uh, in Taiwan. Uh, my dad, right, kind of tried to motivate me. And, and he said that his son, you know, if you are able to, uh, you know, study hard, right? And if you are able to uh, um, uh, end your this semester uh, as one of the top three in your class, that will take you to Taipei. You know? to the amusement park, right, for kids. I've never seen that place, right? But uh, since, ever since he said that, I still remember even today clearly. Well, that entire semester, because of faith, I trust that, you know, what my, God, my dad said to me, even though it hasn't happened yet, but every day I, I, I live with a different motivation and with that kind of expectation, you know, in a sense, it's a mix of motivation and maybe a kind of joy, you know, something to look forward to. So, so through faith, right, I was able to see the reality of my dad's problems. And another example, right, we, we, we also can, like, you know, everyone, although, uh, you know, we were born at some point, certain point in time, but, but the truth is that we don't really remember a lot of things, you know, when we were really young, all right? Uh, so, uh, like, you know, um, I, 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 sometimes I would talk to Ingrid and Grace saying that oh, when you were uh, one year old, you know, uh, about uh, daddy, have, uh, we have done this together, right? You know, and we, I, I enjoy so much. You know what? I think they believe that, right? And they, 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 in a sense, they see what, what I describe through faith because they trust, all right? So, um, so faith is an enabler, right? So for us to expanding, expand our visibility, right? It's an enabler also in the sense that, you know, it enables us to walk in 
close fellowship with God. We truly believe and we experience that he is not the God distant from us. He's our father. He's approachable. He's very approachable. He's available anytime. And also, just like uh, all the uh, loving parents in our church, right? Guess what? The parents reward, right? Rewards kids. Of course, he rewards with the resource he possessed, which is uh, much, is the best resource, right? That everyone, anyone can ever possess. So he rewards. So that's faith, right? And so we enter this, we, 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 we find our identity. We, we are able to benefit from the promise of God, the presence of God, all through faith. So with that, now let's finish this uh, sermon with three other verses, right, this passage. And it represents three different examples of faith, right? So let's look at the first one, Abel. So the author said that in verse four, it was by faith that Abel, brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. And Abel, uh, uh, and through that, right, and that became an evidence that he was righteous. And God showed his approval of his gift. So if we, uh, because as I said, right, you know, that this, uh, uh, the, the author of this book, he, he always refers to the Old Testament. So let's go to the, uh, elaborate a bit more, uh, going back to the account of uh, Abel, right, in, in the book of Genesis. It says, Abel also brought a gift. What kind of gift? The best portions of the firstborn lamb from his flock. And the Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept him and his gift. Uh, please, uh, notice, right? He says uh, he did not accept Cain and his gift, which means that uh, he accepted both Abel, the person, and his gift. Although we are talking about offering, but 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 we are really talk. That I think that the, the passage here we talk about the offering and the person as one, right? And so. Cain was angry, and then the law said, God said, that, why are you so angry? And why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. In other words, God accepts the gift because, because the person, the person's deed, the person's heart, right? So we are able to tie offering now uh, it sounds like some uh, a, 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 a material thing, right? but it's not, right? So it's really tied to us, tied to Abel and him. So it says, you know, uh, this Abel's offering was acceptable to God. It really means that Abel is the very person of Abel. What he does, what he thinks, you know, and what what he what he he say, right? At that time somehow is acceptable and approved by like that. And that itself becomes an evidence of righteousness. God thinks this is the right person. So from God's perspective, right? So we, we, we are, if we think about it, right? You and I, in our daily life, we need approval from people around us. Probably not everyone, but at least from the significant ones, right? We want to be, I want to be approved by my daughters, by my wife. I, I want to be approved by my dear brothers and sisters in South Bay Bible Church, right? So, 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 so it, I think the approval from name uh, are also encouraging and we need that, right? But now this is talking about the approval from God himself, right? So let, let's probe into that a bit, right? How can how God God approves us uh, and accept our offering 
there's a deeper meaning. Right? We already said that it's not just a material thing. It's, it's actually tied to our, you know, our very nature as a person. So Psalm 51, right? Uh, it says here, the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit and you will not reject a broken and repentant heart of God. And Romans chapter 12 is also a very famous path, uh, verse, right? Paul urged Christians at that time, asking them to become a living and holy sacrifice, to offer the entire body, right? Because it's a, it's a living and holy sacrifice. Living means every day. Uh, entirety. So when the Bible said that Abel offered the best portion of his, uh, his land, it really means that not only the material thing, but also his heart, a broken spirit, repentant heart. And not only the inner thing, but also the deeds. Our, what we say, how we think, uh, and, and what we do, the way we interact with other people, the way we see ourselves, the way we interact with God, it's all part of this. So approval from God through the offering that acceptable to Him, that's an evidence of faith. So let me end this example with uh, uh, this message, right? I, I think the approval of men can be uh, encouraging at times. Right? And I admit to that, I, I, I am no exception. Right? But the, the, the approval of God is far greater and more precious than the approval of men. It's so important that nobody can afford to forfeit it, right? I hope this is clear to you. It wasn't, I, I, I don't admit that, I don't really think about it this way always, right? But, but there's one time, you know, I, when I retired from my career uh, back in 2016, the end of uh, June, uh, that very day, right? When I about to walk out of IBM office, right? After handing over my badge, my laptop, my credit card, everything. And I passed through that uh, 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 the place, right? Um, um, I think uh, in, um, we have someone working uh, uh, for IBM before and, uh, and also worked in that place, right? So you know what, what I'm talking about. It, I look at the wall on two sides, right? The pictures, you know, this is called a hall of fame, right? You know, um, it was, it's, it's approval of the system, right? Hey, you know, the, these are the people, IBM fellows, IBM distinguished engineers, mass inventors, blah, 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 right? And, and that time I feel that, you know, as, as soon as I walk out of this door, I never be able to come back. So this will all become a, a history. Whatever that approval is, however, uh, if there's any uh, positive thing about it, Actually, it, it was right. You know, I, um, but, but I, I, I realized that yeah, it is is a sense of loss. But when I walk out of this door, uh, that door, right? You know, I felt that it was so clear to me. One day, right, and actually, I, I like to walk into another wall of fame with God's approval, which far better than that because it never ends. Right, the picture will not be taken out of the wall, um, and and, um, and 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 by the way, you know, and it's not limited to someone, any you know, any kind of people. As soon as we walk by faith, we are we we, sh we show up in that hall of fame of, of God and His approval, and that's something that the more precious, because whatever glory we have in this world approval in this world, it will end at some time. But the approval of that does not. 
Second example, talking about Enoch. Enoch's walk. The passage here says that, uh, kind of interesting. It says that he, he, did, he didn't die. He was taken up to heaven, right? He, he, he departed from this world. But the way that they all, you know, it was described in, on the Bible is that he was taken away. It's kind of interesting, right? He was taken away. He, he, he left, right? But the Bible didn't say he died. So I, I wonder why. But so, so again, right, you know, if we go to the, uh, the count of uh, um, Enoch in, in, in Genesis, he says that he actually lived in close fellowship with God. And it, it actually mentioned twice in that very short uh, uh, passage uh, with lots of people's name listed right, in, in Genesis chapter five. So this author mentioned Enoch saying that he's a testimony of faith, why? because he walked in close fellowship with God. And because of that, he pleased God, God was happy. When, whenever a guy is happy, I think whoever walked with him is happy, right? And, and he never died. Wow. So, so, so let, let me elaborate this uh, uh, by going through, uh, 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 into more details of the account of uh, Enoch, all right? Again, uh, that same passage, chapter five, verse, Genesis, right? So, so um, if we read, this is actually another, uh, um, appear to be a very boring uh, passage, right? Because a, a long list of names and, and, and many of them, just like probably some of you, right? You know, I have hard time to be able to even pronounce that right, right? Like this, right? You know, the, the fifth name on the list here, right? Uh, I will pause like for two seconds to be able to try to uh, uh, pronounce that. And I don't even know if it, uh, the pronunciation is, is right or, or not, right? I, I would say, Bahala, but it may be wrong, right? But whatever, right? So it, it, so it, it seems to be a very boring passage, but if we uh, you know, take a closer look at it, there's something kind of, fun, you know, kind of interesting, right? It talks about the, you know, this, the life of a list of people, including Enoch. But there's a difference when we compare how it described Enoch with the rest of them. Because for Adam, Seth, you know, all this list, right? his six ancestors, the, the, the way it, it, they are described is, they talk about his birth and his death. And in between, when he gave the, you know, birth to the first son, right, and how long he lived. So for Adam, nine, 930 years, and Seth, 912. If you do a quick math, these six people, right, the average lifespan is 919 years. Wow, it's a long time, right? And, and so, but, but Enoch, 365 years. Well, still a long time, right? Um, um, but 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 it's a sixty percent reduction, right? If you if you try to uh, do percentage wise, which means if uh, today I think uh, let's say you know the average lifespan nowadays is eighty years old, right? Um, assume all right. I, I don't know exactly. It may be seventy something, right? But but let, let to make it easier, eighty eighty sixty percent reduction means thirty two years old. So basically, it, 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 it talks about Enoch basically left to the world when he was 32, while average people actually would die at 80 years old. Uh, in Chinese, right, you know, uh, there's a, I heard a, a, a pastor once joke around saying that uh, Enoch, right, like in Nian Zhao Shi, which means that uh, he passed away in, 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 in his youth, right, in, in his prime time. But, but God, but, but this passage, you know, talk about Enoch's walking in close fellowship with God twice. It's a very short passage. Everyone just get like a one verse, right? But there's more describing uh, Enoch, and this is different. 
So, so from there, right, you know, what, it, it make us think, right? Why would the, the you know, uh, the author of the Bible, right, when they are moved, revealed by the, uh, convicted by the Holy Spirit, they, they wrote it this way. It could be that, uh, hey, you know, for usual, for everyone, there's a usual routine, right? Birth, death, marriage, you know, all these matters. But some people, right, for those people who walk in faith, they have also something unusual. And for Ina, walk with God is unusual. So what really matters? Well, we, 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 we all um, do the best we can and we should, right? You know, to uh, eat the good, eat well and uh, rest well and uh, uh, also take care of our emotional uh, health, right? And spiritual health. Hoping that we will stay healthy, right? Uh, and we should all do that. And me too. But the, the, the fact we all know is that uh, however, the, you know, life stands, however long it is, eventually you come to an end. But fellowship with God is eternal and uh, everlasting. So Enoch, when he lived in this world, he walked with God. And since God is eternal, God, so he walked side by side with God to eternity. So from God's perspective, he never died. And we Christian also like that, right? Because we, 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 we born again, right? So we also like to walk with God side by side. We share the joy with him, the pain with him, the secret with him, the glory with him. We share his resource. We share with him what we do, our, what our plan is. We walk with the full awareness of our God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. All right. The last example, and then I finish this passage. The last verse: Noah, obedience. Right. So it says that he obeyed the God because he he built a large boat. Can we go from there to say that? Well, you know, maybe. Uh, uh, someone obey God because he uh, created, uh, uh, wrote a program, right? Uh, by working for Facebook or you know, uh, Google. <laughs> um, probably that's not the idea, right? So there's, there's a reason behind it, right? Not just because he built a large boat to save his family. Well, he did that because God asked him to do it. And it, it, and it, it actually sounds like a foolish thing to do. All right. And, and, and why I'm, do I say that? Right. So, so let, let's read the two more uh, passages, right? Um, Genesis chapter six. Noah was a righteous man. And not only that, right? He was the only blameless person living on earth at that time. So, so it's a wicked, uh, uh, you know, th at that time, right, you know, the, the, the entire world corrupted. And he was the only blameless person in God's sight. Can you see that picture, right? So a lot of people doing so, you know, walking a certain way and he, he doesn't. So he was kind of, in a sense, isolated, right? You know, and maybe, a lot of time becomes the target of, 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 of people's, uh, becomes target for people to, uh, to actually uh, tease, right? But he was able to walk. And, and, he's, and God actually asked him to build this boat because someday the flood will come, will destroy this whole world. And, and the Bible says that after he gave, he built, stopped building the, the boat after he gave a verse to his son. And, and he was 500 years old at that time. And we know that the flood comes uh, when he was 600 years old. 
we don't really know exactly when he started building the, the boat, but it must be in between. So, so, so there's uh, probably we can trust that you know, it it could, could be up to one hundred years, although we don't know exactly how long it is. It's a long time, right? But during that time, not only that he was holy person, as I say, like he he's, he looked like a, a foolish person because he he was the one that doing things that, you know, different from the rest of the world. But the second Peter chapter two, verse five says that he also also warned, warned the world of God's righteous judgment, right? He didn't just build a boat. At the same time, he lived a holy life, but he also shared is from, from today's uh, uh, perspective, it's like share the gospel, hey, repent, stop doing that, you know, and there's a better way. Yeah. But of course, at the same time, we know that he probably received all this uh, uh, um, kind of unfair judgment from, from, from the people around him every day, right? So he was seen as a faithful person because of his faith, his holiness in the midst of evil. And he, he, he was a preacher of righteousness, right? Going through that. And it's a long period of time. We don't know exactly how long, but pretty, probably pretty long. And because of that, the, the, the author of uh, the author of book of Hebrew put him up there. He's a faithful person. Because he is obedient, he's obedient not to sin. He is obedient. He was obedient because he shared the gospel. He was obedient because he persevered through it. So, so I want to quote, uh, you know, um, something that uh, uh, kind of said by Tertullian uh, in the second century. Right? He, he's a very famous uh, uh, theologist in, in, in the early, uh, uh, you know, in, in second century, right, in, in, in church history. And so in his book, in a book wrote, written by Bruce uh, Walker, he, he said that for Tertullian, right, Christianity is a divine foolishness. It's a, divi is a, is, is a divine foolishness wiser than the highest uh, philosophical wisdom of man. And because of that, uh, in no way to be square in any philosophical system. So, so I think this is the wisdom of God, right? You know, it may be seen as if, when we obey God, when we obey him to do what is right in his sight, we obey him to spend our resource, our time, um, sometimes probably even other resource in our life, right? To obey him. It may look foolish because we lose our short-term benefit. Right? Time is limited, it's precious, right? If we spend the time, we have less time. But it's, it's far, it's actually wiser than high is the philosophical wisdom of the name. I found this is very uh, encouraging, right? Um, so that's different kind of wisdom. And you know why? Because, because with this kind of obedience, um, not only that we accept the word to God, we, he approved us. We have the peace in our mind, in, in our heart. But also, in the space of eternity, we will continue to be approved like him. So this is the third uh, uh, testimony from this passage. Right. Let me close this uh, with um, just um, two, uh, two verse. Um, They, they did this because in their mind, 
we look forward to a better homeworld. For us Christians today, do we also walk through our journey with awareness of our eternal home in life? I think we should, right? Although we got distracted all the time, but we should. So let's encourage one another. And the book of, uh, in the second book, Second Peter, right? It says that. So to respond to this promise, let's supplement our faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. Now it's not talk to talk about, right? Originating from faith, moral excellence. And for moral excellence, with the true knowledge about God, and then for more knowledge, self-control, from self-control, patient endurance, to persevere through, and from their godliness, and brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. So let's, uh, so I would like to stop here and, uh, with a prayer. Uh, may God bless his own way. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, thank you for giving us this promise. Uh, this promise that is so profound, so uh, so precious, that we know that we cannot afford, uh, we, we are not able to earn that by ourselves, and we we cannot afford to lose it. But, but yet, Lord, we, are, we also admit that we got distracted all the time by a lot of things around us. So, Lord, I just pray that with your word, would you please just speak in our hearts? Uh, encourage, remind, uh, so that we are able to walk uh, our journey with faith uh, and become a person that approved by you, uh, become a person that can walk in close fellowship with you, uh, in obedience to your command. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me turn this back to the host of the service.
God, we can praise you on the mountaintops and in the valleys, Lord, whatever our circumstance and situation. God, we just thank you so much for your sovereignty, your control over everything. And we thank you that we can trust you um, with our lives, Lord. And as we move forward in this year and um, with the unknowns that are happening, God, in our country and our lives, Lord, um, we just entrust them all to you, God. Um, give us the faith to look to you in every situation. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Chris, Kevin, Teresa, and Ethan for leading us in worship. Um, it was so good, especially to see Ethan as well worshiping alongside. Um, and thank you, Uncle Gene, for um, yeah going through faith with us. Um, and I know just reflecting a little bit about um, what you shared with us, it's just so cl clear that that faith is tied with fellowship with God. Um, in all three examples, right? Like their their faith was also them walking with God um, and yeah and that's the life that you know that Jesus says we have access to as well to walk with him and that he would be with us until the ends of the age um, and so yeah I pray for for all of us that you know that we would experience that um, in this time and in this week even um, let's end with some announcements So today we have our town hall meeting. Um, so stay, stay online after service ends and then, um, yeah, and then we'll all just be in this room going through the town hall meeting. Um, and Uncle Gene will be sharing with us. Next slide. We have our uh, connection cards on our website. So if you have a comment or question, prayer request or something to, um, that you want us to know, you know, you can leave it on the, um, on our website and we'll get back to you. Next slide. And we still have our COVID-19 community care initiative. Um, and so more information you can find in the link below. Next. And this is the same announcement as last week, um, but a few things. Uh, we thank you for continuing to support our church and our ministry in this time. Um, and just a few logistical tax related things. If your mailing address changed in 2020, um, please let Susie know. Um, and also not only are you able to give through PayPal, but we also um, have a Zelle account. Um, and so you can give using our, the email, same email addresses for PayPal. All right, next slide. All right, now for the benediction. All right. Thank you so much, Will and Uncle Gene and the worship team for leading us. Let's close in a word of prayer. God, we thank you that you have made a way for us to be in relationship with you. And we thank you that, God, we can live in this space where we can um, exercise the faith that you've given to us. And so from Hebrews chapter 12, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. So God, we thank you for Jesus. As we leave, let us fix our eyes on him. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Thank you all for joining. Um, again, we have our town hall meeting, but before we go into the town hall, we want to give you a little bit of a break. Um, it's 11.